Okay, here's another quick Unreal tutorial. This one's going to cover kind of using BSPs to do a quick dungeon level block out. Um, and also maybe cover a little bit about the material that's used for the BSPs. So BSPs are a great tool for blocking out stuff. They're kind of a little bit old school, and at the end of the day, you probably want to replace them with static meshes. You can convert them within Unreal from a BSP to a static mesh, or you could also just kind of block out stuff in Maya, and I mean, redo it in Maya and then import them as static meshes. But anyway, let's just walk through it real quick. Um, you know, if you have a, a, a material selected and you drag out a box, I just have a brand new mesh here, um, you can see the box is um, fully textured. Right now I'm working in an unlit um, perspective. In fact, let's drag out one more box here. I'll just duplicate that by holding down Alt. And you'll notice there's a BSP mode here on the far right. And with that, you can actually grab a face, for example. And, um, yeah. whoops, you can grab a face. So if I come in here and pick this side, you can just pull out and move the actual faces, basically make a, a bigger or larger um, piece. So if we go back here, maybe drag out a point light, and drag out uh, a player start. You can see when we play our game, um, we have light and we have our player and it's all is good. So one of the things that uh, is neat with BSPs too is the following. So let, let's go back to this edit mode and let's make this cube uh, a little bit bigger. So we'll grab the top face. Notice I'm kind of covering up everything. So I just have this giant cube and we have this other BSP cube that we created. What's super kind of neat is they have the notion of um, additive or subtractive brushes. So if we switch this brush type to subtractive, you can actually see that we're cutting into the other mesh, right? So it's a great way, like, let's say we wanted to just kind of block out a hallway. So if we drag this subtractive mesh, we made a really big one, and um, kind of moved it through so we bisected the outer mesh. And maybe let's make it just a tad wider. Um, and maybe even a little bit higher. Whoops. A little bit higher. Enough so that we can see our player stars, what I'm trying to get to, just to illustrate the point. Now, when we actually play the game, you can see we're inside of that gigantic uh, area. So let's see, if we really wanted to just kind of turn this into a room, what we could do is pull out the outer box and pull out this side. And so um, now what we have when we play is we're inside of this um, negative space, right? And it's textured too with this um, material. So let's talk about the material real quick because that's, that's another piece that makes it um, really neat. Notice when it's stretching, um, it's called, the UVs are actually not on the mesh, they're actually defined by world space. And in this instance, um, I'm actually using customized UVs, which is a new thing they added in. Let's just run only on the vertex shader. So what's neat about that is, um, for example, it, when this cube is rendered, you know, each of these dots here is a vertex and that's how many times the vertex shader will run and then between here it's going to interpolate the UVs across so this can be actually very performant if you move stuff into this customized UVs as opposed to running it in the normal part of the shader which runs for every fragment um, now of course this doesn't this isn't going to give you anything if you if you have a mesh that has like uh, a high density mesh with a, a 10,000 or 100,000 verts that's uh, far away and they're all packed together, then you're basically going to, this is going to be less performant. So it, it kind of, it's a mixture between how many uh, vertices you see versus how many fragments are covered, right? But So in this case, though, we have lots of fragments covered, fragments being potential pixels, uh, and just a few vertices, so it's, it's a good approach. The other piece, so let me zoom in here so you can always pause this video and copy the, the shader itself. What happens with customized UVs is um, they get set here, and then when the rest of the shader runs, these UVs are going to be using the customized UVs that were set. So the, the bulk of this is, uh, is just a pretty much standard shader. This is a specular roughness and metal combined um, texture and basically applies the 
those three parameters and then a diffuse and then a normal. So that's, that's all run of the mill. What's different is the customized UVs. Um, there's kind of a absolute world position. So basically, depending upon um, the position in the world, that's what UV gets mapped. And this piece uh, interpolates between or lerps between um, whether we're, you know, this face, this face, or this face, the, the three possible planes that are there. This material won't work good on some in certain circumstances, and also the normals won't work, like if you have a sphere or it's rotating. But for what we're doing with this dungeon block out, it, it works really well because it's just um, there to block out and give us an idea of what it looks like. Um, so let's play one more time. You can kind of see you know, we do have some normal map there, some lighting, and uh, we have, uh, you know, we can come in here and, and lay out uh, spe specific meshes. So say you were blocking out your level really quick and you wanted to lay down some um, barrels, you could grab a barrel, um, throw it in here, and you know, block out your level. So it, once you're there, it's all there. Okay, so that's a quick, uh, quick overview. Hopefully you can dig in more to the BSPs. Um, oh, one last thing I should mention is if you did want to convert them to a static mesh, um, once you select your your brush over here on the right hand side is um, create static mesh and that'll actually go ahead and generate a static mesh from your um, your BSP and, and kind of let you have the best of both worlds there. So hope you enjoyed it. It's a quick video uh, just to walk through stuff.